All right, so we're going to do a, a quick in service on how to set up a central line. We don't do this a lot anymore. When we were doing early goal directed therapy, we would set up CVP lines all the time, and we became experts in it. Since then, we'll do CVP lines just you know maybe once every blue moon, and same with arterial lines. I think we're probably doing more arterial lines than we are CVP lines these days, actually. Uh, but the way the setup goes, basically, is you need special special tubing. You need a, a an armband essentially to hold it at the phlebostatic axis. You need a nice bag of normal saline. We don't use anything heparinized uh, in our ED. You need your pressure uh, transducer um, connector for our Philips monitors. You need a pressure bag. You need to have good you know, hand washing and gloves. This is all going to be going into a central line, so it's important to be as kind of aseptic about the whole thing as possible. I even will wash hands and put on gloves while I'm even just setting up this line. It's just a good technique because it's all going to be going right into the patient's central line at the end of this. <clears throat> so in terms of setting it up, Let's do a quick introduction to this line. This line kit has a couple things to it. It's got some extra caps. These caps are important. Don't lose these caps. Don't throw them away. You need every one of them. And then the actual line itself comes all wrapped. You have to take off all of the pieces. And then it's really good to kind of spread the line out so that you kind of get a sense of what you're looking at. So up here on the top part of the line, obviously this is what's going to go to our normal saline bag and it's going to keep the, keep the line pressurized once we've it, got it wrapped up here. In the center of the line, we have the, the kind of the mission critical element. This is actually the transducer, the pressure sensor that does all the work. This lets us know what's happening. Um, you'll also notice, maybe you can't in the video, but this tubing here is, is kind of thick and squishy. It's kind of classic tubing. This tubing, as soon as we're on the other side of the transducer, the patient side, the tubing becomes really rigid and inflexible. And the reason for that is, is it has to sense the slightest variations in pressure. And so the, this tubing is always very, very, very um, firm kind of like a sports car suspension. You've got uh, in here as well, you've got your, <clears throat> with your transducer, you have a three-way stopcock, you have your zero in port, and then you have what we just call the old pigtail, essentially to kind of run fluid through the line, clear the line, etc. cetera, um, do square wave tests, you name it. Uh, that's what this is for here. This is a sampling uh, reservoir syringe, which is very, very convenient. It allows us to actually pull that, pull blood back, um, keeping it in the system, keeping it sterile. We can then sample at one of our distal ports, and then push the blood right back in. That's very convenient. We have another uh, stopcock here. And this is the terminal end of the line. These sampling ports are self-sealing. Quick little alcohol, hit them with a blunt access cannula, um, and you're good to go. So very, very, very practical in terms of um, doing repeated lab sampling for these patients. All right, uh, before I even start priming this line, I like to set this up by just with gloves on, of course, checking all of my connections. Inevitably, one of these, oh, that one was loose. Inevitably, one of these guys is going to be loose. They seem to always come loose after having been sterilized. You want to work your way all the way down the line and check every connection. This one was a little bit loose, too. Having one of those kind of fail during a lecture would be problematic. Okay, so <clears throat> liter bag of normal saline. We're going to do a spike and burp thing. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways. If we're really in a rush, spike and burp literally looks like spike, unspike, get rid of, get rid of the air, and then keep on driving. Otherwise, you can actually just hold the bag upside down and burp the air through. It's just a little bit slower, so I'm not going to do it right now. Okay, that part's done. We're going to reach through our bag, pull this guy up. And this loop through. Now we're ready to hang this. Pressure bags. Uh, are, are an important part of this process. They're mission critical in an arterial line because they have to always be in excess of the arterial pressure. They're not as essential um, in, a, in a CVP line because the pressure is just so low. I mean, figure CVP is going to be maybe 2 to 8 or even you know, occasionally 0 to 8. <clears throat> I don't prime the line on pressure. Priming under pressure kind of hides air bubbles and we want all of our air bubbles to be as obvious as possible so that we have no air in the line when we're done. So. I did pressurize it, I just did a couple pumps, but it's not pressurized. And then we'll just go on ahead and start priming this line. To prime it, what we do is we'll go off to the patient with our gloves on, we'll take this cap off, and we actually have to squeeze, we have to, we have to squeeze these guys here to um, allow some of the fluid to come through the system. With this transducer, because air is such an enemy of sensing pressure, because air is compressible, fluid is not, um, I like to hold the transducer upside down and even give it some flicks as we're priming it. That really ensures that I've gotten all the air up and out of the transducer. Once I feel confident of that, I'm going to go on ahead and take one of my caps, 
There's a couple caps here. Take a look at them. These two are the same. These go on the zero port. And this guy is different. This one goes all the way down at the very end of the, at the, end of the line to replace this guy. So typically, if you're gonna hang this up and use it after the procedure is done, you'll keep it capped like that so that it's nice and clean. Okay, so we've, we've primed to the transducer midpoint. I'm gonna go ahead and put a cap on here. The yellow cap suggests we're, we're essentially sterile. We've primed, we're closed. I'm now gonna go off to the cap and I'm gonna to continue to prime to the bottom of the line. So two-phase priming, always two-phase priming. Off pressure, prime to the transducer first, and after you've primed to the transducer, then finish priming to the end of the line. Air is really the enemy of any pressure sensing. All right, our line is primed. Go on ahead and put our kind of our terminal cap on, and this this line can then be kind of set up and uh, you know held for use until after the positions are finally finished. Once they've finished putting this together and you're ready to actually apply it to the patient, that's kind of phase two in the operation. The line is set up. You're then going to take this guy. You're going to typically connect it to the distal port, which is almost always brown. We often used to say like brown or, you know, it's kind of blood. Brown equals blood equals distal. That's kind of the way we, we figured it out. If you don't want to do that, you can just look on the actual ports themselves and it'll say distal, distal proximal medial. All right, so I would attach this to the patient. Then I would uh, find the phlebostatic axis, which is going to be fourth intercostal space, kind of mid-axillary line. But well, the way we typically do that nowadays is we're going to put uh, the transducer itself into your transducer holder. And then put this on the patient's arm. That way it, it essentially is always going to stay in the same position. So <clears throat> red would be art line, blue is CVP, yellow would be like a Schwann-Ganz or a pulmonary artery catheter. And then they're just going to wear it like they would typically wear like an, like an armband or an iPod holder. And that's going to keep it in a consistent position. And that's important for when you're zeroing. If you zero and this thing is suddenly on the floor, you're going to get wildly different pressures. Or if it's suddenly on the ceiling, you know, that's going to make your pressures go up or down significantly. So having this be in a consistent spot called the phlebostatic axis is really important um, over time. So we've connected this to the patient's brown port. We've put this on the patient's arm. And now we need to actually connect the transducer to our monitor. And that's where this guy comes into play. You'll notice it's kind of like a telephone jack connection. The two of these guys plug together. Ta-da! And, and that's it. It's plug and play, which is the good news. So the moment you plug this in, automatically the monitor starts recognizing that it has a pressure line engaged, and it'll start to run it. If it doesn't, uh, something's more than likely broken, we may need to call Biomed. So think of this as being plug and play. The moment you turn it on, it's going to automatically start saying, okay, hey, we've got a pressure line. You may need to label a line. It may think you have an art line, and you may need to tell it, no, we have CVP. But one way or the other, it's plug and play, and it should automatically recognize the moment you plug them in. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do here, and I could have done this at an earlier step as well, typically as soon as it's attached to the patient and after priming, we go ahead and pump this up. We're going to get it up to about 200, 250, which, again, for CVP is less mission critical than it is for art lines. That's a great forearm workout. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Wait, just basically go to your seat green. Once you see green, you're at a good pressure. If you use this bag a lot, if you're constantly flushing through it through the bag, you're going to have to be pumping this back up. Always kind of keep an eye on this. All right, over here to our monitor. This is our CVP waveform right here. Like I said, this may show art line when you first turn it on. It may show CVP. That's just typically as simple as just relabeling it. So you can see where I press label and you can kind of go up and down. You can call it a bunch of different things as you need to, okay? Arterial blood pressure, for instance, is one of the options. I won't rename it. If you're having trouble finding how to rename it in here, I want to point out there's this little rack module here as well that allows you to look at all of the different modules you have plugged in. You can see we have a large pressure module labeled as CVP. There's an additional arterial line module here. You can do all sorts of fun stuff by tapping each one of these things and reconfiguring it. Once you are connected to the patient and you're ready to start using your CVP, the thing that you have to basically do is zero it. Uh, there's lots of lectures on this. I would suggest you read uh, about some you know, use of pressure lines. Maybe you can look at like, the CCRN books. I'll just teach you briefly how to zero. So the first thing you need to do is understand why we zero. And the reason why we zero is we need to tell the transducer what neutral is, what atmospheric pressure is. And once we've done that and we close the system, then it will be able to tell whenever the patient's uh, blood um, C CVP pressure is fluctuating above or below the known pressure value. I guess that's essentially what zeroing is doing. So uh, take a look here. Before we zero, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go off to the patient. 
we're going to create a known value by essentially eliminating any pressure. So we say off to the patient, we pull this cap off. If you put these on too tightly, by the way, you better have a pair of hemostats. They are impossible to get off. We actually open this to air, believe it or not, which seems kind of counterintuitive. Um, and once it's open to air, we come back to our monitor. Okay, so to, uh, to zero CVP, essentially, here's our CVP line. It's all plug and play, but you're going to tap right there on the waveform in the middle, and you see where it says zero CVP. So we're actually going to touch right here, zero CVP. And what lets you know that this is successful, we're in demo mode, so it won't do it. But in the real world, this is going to click over to zero, this actual CVP value will click to zero. And then right here where it says CVP last zero at, it'll actually give you today's date and time, letting you know that you had just zeroed it, which is important. When that's done, you can come on back to your transducer, which is over here. And go ahead and, and this of course would be sterile and be wearing gloves, but you take your cap and you go ahead and put your cap back on and then go off to the cap. And now the line is live. We've zeroed our transducer. We created a known uh, value by opening it to air and we're ready to go. We can start actually transducing the waveform itself. So let's take a quick look back up here at the monitor. Um, <clears throat> so we already did the zeroing piece. The other thing I like to do is do optimum scale as well. And that'll give us a really nice tall waveform. You can see right now, for instance, um, we were on a 30 point scale and the waveform looked really flat. Now that we're on a 15 point scale, we have a much nicer waveform that lets you actually see the CAX and the you know, waves. And so you could actually approximate the mean if you wanted to print this out and do it the old fashioned way. Um, and that's basically it. So there's your CVP. You've got your different waveforms. I've optimized the scale as well. And we're ready to start actually interpreting this information. Okay.